He, uh, the last one we'll look at here tonight, and then we'll have two more in the next sermon. But the last one is man under law. And so take your Bibles, go to Exodus chapter number 19, and look at verse number 3 over there. Exodus chapter number 19, and verse number 3. And remember from our notes that we already read there in page number 20 of the Schofield Bible, uh, Schofield had said that Israel rashly accepted the law. What he's teaching is that they exchanged grace, they exchanged the promise for the law. Now look at what the Bible has to say. Go to Exodus chapter number 19 and look at verse number 3. And while you turn there, I'm going to read you some more of what Schofield said. He says, again, the grace of God came to help uh, of came to the help of helpless man and redeemed the chosen people out of the hand of the oppressor. In the wilderness of Sinai, he proposed to them the covenant of law. Yeah, he just proposed it. He proposed it and he just gave them a choice. And therefore they rashly accepted it. God said, hey, you have this promise here that if you'll just believe, you'll be saved and you'll be my people. But hey, I've got another covenant for you. And it's called the law. And so you'll just take this, uh, this covenant and if you'll just keep the law and obey the law, then you'll be saved. Now which one would you like? Would you like it to be free just by believing in God and just be, by being my promise? Or would you like it to be by the law, by your own works? Does that sound like something that God has proposed? I mean, forgive me if I'm wrong, but has God ever proposed that to man? I mean, dear, in our day and time, does God say to man, hey, whatever you want, however you want salvation to be, that's how you can have it. Hey, that sounds something from the world, doesn't it? That sounds like something from the devil. That sounds like the trick and the wile of the devil that the devil has concocted to deceive the masses. Because what is it that Satan does? Satan goes out and says, hey, world, whatever you want, whatever religion you want, all faiths are the same, all religions are the same, whatever way you want it to be, whatever way of salvation you want to take, whatever road you want to take, hey, whatever light you have, just believe it. Whether it's the Bible or the Quran or, or you're a Mormon or you're a Jehovah Witness, just whatever it is, follow the light that you have and you'll be saved. You see, that's what he's saying about God. That God just kind of proposed this to him. No, God didn't propose it to him. God gave him a commandment. These are known as the commandments of God. Everybody got that? That wasn't something that he just proposed to him and said, hey, if you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, then oh well, don't do it. Because listen, the law was never given for salvation. And you know why the law was given? The law was given to be our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. To show man that he could not keep the law. And that he could not be by, saved by the law. And that there has never been a law whereby righteousness had, could come. Look at what the Bible has to say. In fact, before we read the Bible, I'll read to you the rest of what he says. Instead of humbly pleading for a continued relation of grace, they presumptuously answered, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The history of Israel in the wilderness and in the land is one long record of flagrant, persistent violation of the law. And at last, after multiplied warnings, God closed the testing of man by law in judgment. First Israel and then Judah were driven out of the land into a dispersion which still, continue, still continues. Now look at Exodus chapter number 19 because this is where God proposed the law. This is where Israel rashly accepted the law. And look at what the Bible has to say here. Exodus chapter number 19. Look down at verse number 3. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will do what? Obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant. Then ye shall be a peculiar people, uh, I'm sorry, a peculiar treasure uh, unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. Hey, proposed or commanded? 
commanded. Look at verse number 8. Eight. And it says, And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Now forgive me if I'm wrong, but was there any place in there where God gave him a choice? Where he just proposed it? No, he didn't propose it. No, this was the commandment of God. But you see, Schofield changes the word of God, and he says this was a proposal, not a commandment. You see, he changed the word of God. Now, let's take our Bibles and go to Galatians chapter number 3, and look at verse number 21. We'll end with this here tonight. Galatians chapter number 3. Go back over there. I know we were just there a little while ago, but go back over there. Galatians chapter number 3. And look at verse number 21 and see what the Bible has to say. Let's see if this lines up with Scripture, shall we? Let's see if in the Old Testament, if Israel could be saved by the law. Because that's what he's saying. That Israel rationally exchanged the grace for the law. That God proposed this and they chose the law over grace is what he's saying. Now let's see if that lines up with the Scripture. Let's see if these Ruckmanites are right. Let's see if you can't, could ever be saved by the law. Look what the Bible has to say. Galatians chapter number 3 and verse number 21. And the Bible says right there, Is the law against the promises of God? God what? Forbid. That means no, right? For those who are illiterate out there, the illiterate Ruckmanites and all these Gippites out there, it means no. Look what it says there. It says, God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, very righteousness should have been by the law. Hey, the Bible just said, hey, if you could have been saved by the law, that should have been how it stayed. We should have just been saved by the law for all eternity, that we should have just been saved by keeping the law, that that law should have been given. But you know what? That could never be given because there is none that do with good. No, not one, the Bible says. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that the blood of bulls and of goats and of bullocks could never pay for our sins. The Bible says this. Look back down at what the Bible says here, verse 22. But the scripture hath concluded what? All under sin. You know what the Bible's saying? Because the scripture has concluded all under sin, therefore you would have had to been perfect in order to be saved. Hey, the Bible even says this in the in the same chapter here. If you go back up to verse number 10, and it says, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Hey, if you don't continue in every single thing, then you're under the curse. Right. Now you answer me this. If that's what the Bible says, that in order for you to not be under the curse, that you have to continue in every single thing. In other words, you have to be perfect. Whether Was there ever a man in the Old Testament that was perfect? Was there ever a man, a human being, that kept the entire law? No. And Jesus answered this. Remember in the New Testament, there's a man that comes to him. And he tells him all that he's done. He's kept the law from his youth up. And he's done all these things. And Christ said, if thou wilt be perfect, sell that thou hast and give it to the poor. Hey, that man, he had done many things. He had kept many, uh, much of the law. But guess what? He wasn't perfect. He couldn't keep it all. No man could ever keep the law. Hey, the apostle Paul and, and Peter, I believe it was, Peter in the book of Acts, said, talking about those that wanted to cause the Gentiles to be circumcised and to keep all these laws and to become Israelites. He said, why do you put a yoke upon them which neither we nor our fathers were able to bear? That they, even their fathers that had come before. Those who were in the Old Testament. Those who were in the wilderness. Those throughout the so-called age of law. The so-called dispensation of the law. They were never able to bear it. You know why? Because they could not be perfect. Because the law was not given to them to save them. The law was given to them to show mankind that you cannot be perfect no matter how hard you try. No matter how good you think you are, no matter how perfect you think you've become, you're not perfect. And the Bible says, but the scripture hath concluded 
all under sin, the Bible says. Look back at it. The Bible says right there, Galatians chapter number 3. Look down at verse number 22. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that what? Believe. That believe, the Bible says. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Shut up unto faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Now, does it say it changed or it was revealed? It was revealed. You see, God's plan was manifest. God's plan was always the same. It was just revealed throughout the ages. The Bible says, verse 24, Wherefore the law was our what? Our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by what? By faith, the Bible says. Verse 26 says, For ye are all the children of God, by what? By faith in Christ Jesus, verse 29, the last verse of the chapter. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And so far, when it comes to these dispensations, it's Bible 5, Schofield 0. Because Schofield's wisdom, it's a doctrine of the devil. 